shall next discuss spanning circles spanning trees and spanning paths so given a graph g a spanning path so spanning path is a subgraph let me call it as a h such that uh, v of h is same as v of g it's spanning which means the vertex set of this and this are one and the same so all of v of g is present in h and uh, in then it is a spanning path so if you look at uh, the subgraph uh, the subgraph is a path and uh, in addition to that such that v of h equals v of g and the uh, h is a path so it is basically a subgraph uh, and if you look at uh, the subgraph the subgraph looks like a path and uh, it also contains all of this so similarly one can talk about spanning cycle spanning cycle is a cycle and uh, that spans all of this so on the similar line uh, one can talk about spanning cycle so spanning cycle of g is uh, a cycle say c such that uh, v of c is same as v of g and uh, spanning tree so spanning tree is it is a tree t such that v of t is same as v of g now let's look at couple of examples to understand things better say if you take this now if you look at 1 Two, three, four, and five, and you see that uh, this one is a subgraph such that uh, v of uh, h is basically this, and uh, it is also a path. Now, if you look at uh, something like this, so one, two, five, this one is not uh, a spanning path. this one is not a spanning path this is a path but it's not spanning uh, all of v of g now uh, this one is spanning path if you look at 1 2 3 4 5 5 this one is a cycle and contains all of v of g so this one is an example spanning cycle Okay. and uh, look at 2 with respect to 2 you go to 1 5 4 and 3 now here is a tree meaning it is connected and acyclic and it contains all of uh, v of g so this one is an example spanning tree okay so a graph say of this type now if you look at this one and then say 4 then 7 say 6 and 5 this one is a path but this one is not the uh, spanning so now is there a subgraph uh, which is uh, a path and spanning uh, can we include 2 uh, 3 and still get a path answer is no so which means this one has no no spanning path exists similarly this one is just a cycle but it is not a spanning cycle so we need a cycle containing all vertices that's what it says a cycle such that v of c is same as this a tree containing all of v of g 
a path containing all of e of g so we don't have a path containing all of e of g so on the similar line uh, no spanning cycle exists how about spanning trees so you can have one then two three four five 6 and 7 so now you see that uh, this one is a tree connected and a cyclic and uh, containing all of this so this one is an example spanning tree of this so this shows that uh, for a graph spanning tree at least through this examples you see that spanning tree always exist and uh, spanning path and spanning cycle uh, it need not exist so there are graphs uh, having uh, spanning path and cycle and there are graphs not having both and but at least uh, from these examples we see that uh, spanning tree exist always cos the graph itself is a path say p4 then it has a spanning path the graph itself but spanning cycle is no and the path itself is a tree so which means spanning tree is also one of the same so all paths are connected and acyclic so all paths are trees suppose the graph is of this type say which is disconnected something like this so this is my g now graph is disconnected when it is disconnected uh, we cannot find a spanning path because by definition path is a sequence of vertices and edges so it has to be connected similarly spanning cycle must be connected tree by definition brings uh, connectedness so spanning tree is also no so couple of uh, observations so if g is connected then there exists a spanning tree for any graph if g is connected there exists a spanning tree but the spanning path spanning cycle may or may not exist okay so if g is connected spanning path cycle may or may not exist for example uh, the graph is connected uh, this has a spanning path uh, and there is no uh, spanning cycle and the previous example we saw that uh, it was neither having uh, spanning path nor spanning cycle but if it is connected it turns out that uh, spanning tree exist if spanning tree exist so if g is connected then we may find at least one spanning tree so meaning if g itself is a tree say something like this then number of spanning tree is unique so the spanning tree is g itself 1 2 3 4 5 suppose the graph is like this k4 then we see that uh, there are more than one spanning tree so 1 2 3 Four. This is one spanning tree, 
and the next spanning tree is with 2 as the root you can get this and with uh, 3 as the root you get uh, this so we may find more than one spanning tree if G is connected and interestingly which you can verify later uh, number of uh, spanning trees for K4 is 16 so this spanning tree is different from this spanning tree and uh, this span, for example the edge 3 4 is present but over here it is not so this spanning tree is different from this this one is different from the other two so like that you can start listing uh, different spanning trees and it turns out that uh, for k4 number of spanning trees is 16 which you can verify later often the graphs are weighted for example suppose this net models a campus network so imagine uh, this one is a system in say computer science laboratory this one is a system in say library and they both are connected and so on and uh, the uh, weight represents maybe propagation delay or the amount of time you need to transfer a packet from one node to another node and, and so on. So let me, so just to avoid uh, confusion, let me label this one as A, B, C, D and this one represents the weight say 4, 1, 2 and say 6 and 1. So which means I need one microsecond to transfer a packet from B to C. I need say 6 microseconds to transfer a packet from D to E and vice versa and uh, it is undirected right. So which means you can transfer a packet from E to D and you can also transfer a packet from this. If A wants to transfer a packet to D, it can either take uh, this path or it can take uh, this path. So now you see that. Uh, from A you can reach uh, D via this or I can also reach uh, through B, C and then D. So 4, 1 and 2. Now the weight of uh, this path, weight of this path is simply sum the individual weights so you get 7. The weight of uh, this path is so now you see that uh, there are two different ways of uh, reaching uh, D from A but interestingly the weights of these two are one and the same and uh, let us look at uh, C and E, from C you want to reach E, I can go via D or from C I can go to B, from B you go to A, from A you go to this. So this one is 1, 4, 1 and the weight of uh, this path is 8 and weight of this path is 6. So it is natural, so when you have uh, multiple paths between a pair of nodes, we naturally give uh, preference to the minimum one. So prefer min weight path or we call it as uh, shortest path. So you have multiple ways of uh, reaching a destination from a given source, naturally you will choose the one which is shortest or you choose the one which is uh, min weight path. Similar thing we apply here. So given a graph which is weighted and, uh, and you have multiple ways of uh, reaching a node, choose the one which is min weight. In case of uh, undirected, unweighted, so for example, uh, look at this, it is undirected and unweighted. 
so unweighted is equivalent to drawing a weighted graph where all weights are same maybe 1 1 1 2 2 2 and so on now you want to reach uh, a node for example uh, you want to reach uh, c from a i can go via b or i can go via e and d so you see that uh, this one is 3 this one is 2 so shortest path or min wide path is this so on the similar line one can talk about uh, min weight spanning tree one can also talk about uh, minimum weight uh, spanning cycle you have more than one spanning cycle then which one i should choose so you have more than one way of getting uh, obtaining a spanning tree choose the one having uh, minimum weight and that's precisely what uh, this says for example so let's look at uh, a e1 and 4 and 1 and 2 so you see that uh, this one is uh, spanning it is uh, connected and acyclic so this one is a spanning tree so the weight of this uh, spanning tree is 8 simply sum all of them ok now you see that uh, ED is 4, 6 and uh, then this one is 2 this one is 1 this one is 4 so you see that uh, this one is also a spanning tree and the weight of uh, this spanning tree is uh, 13 and so now between these two you see that this one is uh, minimum so like that one can find uh, many spanning trees and of all that uh, we are interested in the one whose weight is minimum so similarly one may find more than one uh, spanning cycle and choose the one for which weight is minimum so shortest path or min weight path similarly min weight spanning tree min weight spanning cycle they have got excellent applications in the field of uh, computer science in particular in the de design of uh, routers in the design of uh, circuits in the design of campus networks it has got uh, plenty of applications so this is what i was uh, telling you initially that uh, many problems that we come across in computer science can be modeled as appropriate graph theoretic problem for example finding a spanning uh, path or a circuit in a campus network whose weight is minimum in a campus network is equivalent to finding uh, a minimum weight uh, spanning cycle as far as uh, graph theory is concerned and now uh, given a campus network you are interested in uh, transferring a packet between a pair of nodes with least cost that's equivalent to finding a shortest path between that pair of nodes so like that there are many computational problems which can be modeled as a graph theoretic problem so take interest in all of this which you will uh, come across again and you will study all of this in detail when you take up a course on data structures and algorithms and subsequently computer networks and so on